Today's video is brought to you by the wonderful folks over at X2, and that is me, because it is my second channel. Tonight I will be streaming some Halo 2 Anniversary Multiplayer, so if you want to stop by and say hi, maybe even get into a game, follow the link in the upper right hand corner or down in the description. But enough selling out, let's roll the intro. Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars video. Today we are talking about the Coruscant Undercity, which is, in my opinion, one of the most interesting places in Star Wars. The Coruscant Undercity I've described in the past as sort of like a deep ocean. The surface provides almost no hint of the massive amount of life and space beneath. Generally, the deeper you go within the Coruscant Undercity, the stranger things get, and there are creatures who live and die without ever seeing the light of Coruscant's sun. Even on the higher level, there are seedy cantinas, crime is rampant, there are strange creatures you can't find anywhere else in the entire galaxy. The deeper you go, the stranger and potentially more disturbing things get. There are foundations which are perhaps millions of years old, but which have now been built on by towering structures thousands of feet higher. There are places which are outright ignored, and the entirety of the Undercity is far too vast to explore or document. Unsurprisingly, even at the best of times, life in the Coruscant Undercity was very, very difficult, and even more so the further you went away from the surface. Food was scarce, there were many large predators, disease was rampant, as was crime, but things only got more difficult for the citizens of Coruscant after the New Republic took control of the planet. Although it's not necessarily fair to lay blame on the government, the decades after the capture of Coruscant would see the Undercity turned into a literal hell. So the first major event I want to talk about is actually pretty minor compared to the subsequent ones, and that is the ravaging of Coruscant during the Imperial Civil War. So basically, in the weeks before Palpatine returned as part of Operation Shadowhand, there was a massive Imperial Civil War. It started off with the Empire taking back the planet from the New Republic, but then several sub-Imperial factions split apart and began a massive war. Coruscant was the center of this, and the planet was completely completely ravaged. Strafing runs were done against the surface, capital ships in the hundreds were knocked out of space and, well, they have to go somewhere, and there was non-stop fighting on the ground. Even Luke Skywalker at one point crashed a Star Destroyer onto Coruscant's surface without really worrying too much about the local population. Now, after the Empire was pushed back and Palpatine was defeated, the New Republic began some reconstruction efforts, although they really only focused on the planet's surface, and this is a theme that we'll see through throughout this video. And in fact, this most likely made things even worse in the Undercity. How the New Republic would repair Coruscant was through the use of massive construction droids, which would basically take up debris and build new buildings. They would do so in a way that would keep things efficient on the surface, but they paid very little attention to what happened down below. And it's quite possible that entire pockets of the Coruscant Undercity would have then been cut off from the surface. What's more, the battle would have been just as bad on the Undercity as the surface, with fires, buildings collapsing, explosions, etc, etc. So that was pretty bad. But for the next decade and a half, things would really be okay on Coruscant. I mean, they wouldn't improve, and it was already a step down from the time of the Empire, but although Coruscant was attacked by Thrawn and others, nobody really successfully damaged the surface, except in small localized bombings like the New Rebellion, but really the Undercity was fine, or not made worse. However, the Yuuzhan Vong War would see the darkest days, perhaps, of history brought to Coruscant. The Yuuzhan Vong began at the Outer Rim, but pushed inwardly towards the core, with the New Republic only offering an ineffective resistance. Coruscant was the seat of the New Republic's government, and was an important planet to the Yuuzhan Vong. Thus, they launched a massive attack known as the First Battle of Yuuzhan Tar. Thousands of Yuuzhan Vong ships were able to overwhelm the New Republic's defensive forces as they beat down the planetary shield and got access to the surface. Many, many citizens would have died during the battle itself while others would be injured or, worst of all, captured by the Yuuzhan Vong. The planet itself 
was devastated by orbital bombardments and crashing ships and the destruction of orbital facilities. But worse still was yet to come to the planet. The Yuzhan Vong decided that Coruscant would be transformed into Yuzhan Tar and made in the image of their homeworld. The planet underwent massive changes, not only terraforming, but the planet itself was given a new orbit in order to increase the temperature. Now the planet would be moved back later, and these two events most likely had some catastrophic effects on the planet structure which would certainly be felt most acutely in the underworld. But it's the terraforming efforts I want to talk about mostly. Yuzhan Vong shapers began transforming the planet with native flora and fauna of the Yuzhan Vong galaxy, many of which was not very friendly to those still living on Coruscant. The planet was covered largely in York coral, and many of the city's remaining structures were destroyed to make way for the new Yuzhan Tar. Eventually, of course, the New Republic then the Galactic Alliance would win the war and would recapture Coruscant, even making it again their capital. However, this was not helpful to the Undercity, and even the meager attention that had been paid to that area and the citizens who lived there was dropped in favor of surface level reconstruction efforts. Here's a quote. Half a kilometer down, and that's not very far for the Undercity, the structures were so crusted in your coral that it was impossible to see the buildings themselves. Curtains of moss dangled hundreds of meters from Ped bridges, and 10 meter stalks of fungi grew on balconies. Strange four-winged reptiles soared through the darkness, their claws clutching still struggling rodents, or limbs torn from decaying corpses. In many ways, it looked as though the Yuzhan Vong had never left this part of the planet, and in some ways, that was true. So this is in the Legacy era, and it was so bad at this point that there was an entire program on the Perry Needmo News Hour about the plight of the individuals living still in the Undercity. The the program is discussed in a few of the Fate of the Jedi books, but I've just got a few quotes from allies. Keep in mind, all of this here is from fairly high levels within the Undercity. It's much worse the deeper you go. This place has been forgotten. There's no order, no civilization here. There's no health care for beings trying to eke out an existence. There's no stopping the sale of drugs or illicit activities or investigation of murder. Violent deaths are an everyday occurrence, and the bodies are looted before they become food for ferals. This is a dark place. Place, a frightening place, and it's just easier to forget about it since we are not forced to see it every day. But things were due to get worse, and much, much worse. At this point, the Coruscant Undercity, as we've discussed, was largely alive and ready to be corrupted. This corruption would be brought to the planet in the form of Abeloth, a near demigod and the harbinger of the apocalypse. Abeloth could cause psychosis, she could break the minds of people on a planet and dominate them just by being there. And that's what began to happen on Coruscant. This effect magnified not only by the many people, but by the still many living creatures from the planet's transformation into Yuzhantar, especially in the Undercity. The beginning bits of this transformation were noted during the Piri Nemo News Hour, where we learned that the Undercity looked worse than ever. It seemed as though the York Coral, Slash Vines, and other plant growth, far from being beaten back, had all but taken over. Whereas before the inhabitants had tended to shy away from cams, now the hollow film crew who had received hazard pay for obtaining the footage captured gangs brutally and openly terrorizing those unfortunate enough to be overtaken. Nemo ended by saying one thing is tragically certain, it is a darker and far more dangerous place than ever before. Abeloth fed on fear, so this transformation continued to make her more powerful, and as the Jedi began to discover her deception, she created massive super volcanoes across Coruscant, which, again, disproportionately affected the Undercity. I've got one final quote which will sum up the state of things at the end of Fate of the Jedi. The volcanic activity has stopped everywhere on the planet, though it will probably be years before we even have a basic survey of the damage to the Undercity. The team has identified over a hundred thousand sites that need investigation down there, and it's not easy to tell whether we're looking for a magma well, a terrorist attack, or a building collapse. This next part is kind of funny. Tell him about the death clouds, Kip Duron suggested. Dorvin's face grew dim. That's right. Clouds of ash, poisonous gas, and toxic smoke are still spreading through the Undercity. We think Underdweller casualties are huge. They could be in the billions already. So when I said Coruscant was transformed into a literal hell, some of you probably thought that I was just clickbaiting or whatever, but let's just check up. We have literally
viral, active mega volcanoes and lava fields. We have, and I quote, death clouds. We have people being torn apart mentally and physically due to the presence of an angry demigod. All of that on a planet which has already been almost unimaginably ravaged by war and even before that was in a pretty crappy state. You do not want to be in the Coruscant Undercity at any point, but you definitely do not want to be there about 40 years after the Battle of Yavin. But that's all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I personally did. I could kind of just talk off the top of my head since this is all stuff I remembered vividly from reading these books. So fun for me, hopefully fun for you guys as well. Let me know what you thought down in the comments and what you'd like me to cover next. Anyway, until next time, guys, have a good one and may the Force be with you.